Hey there, I'm Scott Winfield, and welcome to Victorian Opera's web series, Artists in Isolation. On this episode, we're delighted to be joined by much-loved musical theatre star, Lucy Maunder. Lucy, thank you so, so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Now, you were in Brisbane when the world shut down. You were about to open a season of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. What has your life looked like in the months since? Um... Well, I'm pretty sure it's still March, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it's it? March it's, 31st it's March, for eternity. It's March the 150th, I think. Um, yeah, we got um, we got sent home the night before our first preview. So uh, yeah, it was it was sad in that we had four new boys in Brisbane that were about to open as Charlie and they didn't get to perform the show, which was tough for them. But we ended up uh, teching and dress rehearsing the entire show and uh, all of their families got to come and see them for an open dress rehearsal. But we never got to hear, um, we never got to hear the band uh, who I know would have been wonderful. And yeah, I know it was an almost sold out season in Brisbane. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's a huge shame that we didn't get to finish it off then and such a weird feeling that we bowed in Melbourne for the last time and didn't realise that we weren't, you know, we weren't going to have an audience again. So it was, yeah, it was a very surreal experience and it happened so fast that when we were in Brisbane, they were talking about the coronavirus in in China and we were sort of like, okay, well, that sounds, it sounds awful, but from the time that it was sort of starting to affect the theatre industry to the time we got sent home was was so quick. Um, and it was, I think, when Broadway shut all the lights that we were, we were, we were like, okay, this is, yeah, this is real and this is happening. Um, so, yeah, then we got sent home and we thought, oh, yeah, we'll be back in a month or maybe two weeks. And then here we are in September. It's so bizarre, and I think everyone in March probably had similar thoughts. I certainly did. It's you walk away from your workplace or wherever you are, thinking, "Okay, you know, see everyone in two to three weeks, maybe a little bit longer." Mm. I don't think anyone, particularly in Victoria, could have contemplated that. <laughs> I don't think so. So many <laughs> months on, yes. So many months on, we're still here, and we still don't know um, when we're getting out. So. Yeah, it's definitely been challenging, but there's been parts about it that have been really positive as well. Like I've got to, after spending three, nearly three and a half full years working full time, I've got to spend a heap of time with my daughter um, at home every day, which has its challenges as well, but um, is is beautiful and very special. And I've loved, I've loved the time with her. And it's, um, yeah, we're like two peas in a pod. So that's gorgeous. Tell us about Edie. Edie is three and a half. Um, and yeah, with so much sass that I don't even, I don't know what's about to hit me. <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, she's hilarious and yeah, just a, a live wire. She doesn't stop talking from the second she wakes up to the second she goes to bed. And um, yeah, so we thought that it was, because she's not able to see anybody and she's not able to go to kindergarten, she's not able to socialise at all, we thought it would be a really smart idea to uh, to get an eight-week-old puppy in this time, which is great. It's lucky he's cute um, <laughs> because it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Your partner is a fellow performer, Jared Bryan. Yeah. And you, you know, you're, of course, sensationally talented. Do you see any signs that Edie might be following in your footpaths? Uh, unfortunately for her, yes. Because <laughs> I would say don't, just don't. Um, but, I mean, yeah, she's been in theatres since she was born. I, mean, I started rehearsals for Matilda when she was six weeks old and she was just in my dressing room the whole time and loved coming into the theatre during Charlie and... Um, during Beautiful the year before that as well. And she just loves, I think she saw Charlie about eight times at the end. 
Um, and loves the theatre, loves music, loves watching things like Annie and Sound of Music and all of the movie musicals that I loved as a kid. Um, but, yeah, she sings, loves Frozen, does performances for us all the time. And, yeah, she works on her high chest belt on a daily basis, <laughs> which is um, it's good. It's loud. Your parents are, of course, enormously talented. Your dad is director Stuart Maunder and your, your mum is soprano Anne-Marie MacDonald. I, I wonder, with your partner being a performer and you, basically your entire family being so involved in the arts, has 2020 brought you together in a different way in terms of reflecting and bonding about what has happened to the arts in the wake of coronavirus? Um. It, it has. I think that the most difficult part about it, um, especially, you know, I've, I've spoken a lot to Dad about this, is just is that we have nothing tangible to grasp. We don't know when, um, when society is going to get to a place where they are comfortable to sit next to a stranger for two and a half hours in close proximity. Completely. Um, and just knowing... You know, I had I had things uh, booked for the rest of 2020, and as did everybody, and not not having any idea about when or how that could possibly happen again. I mean, I even watch I even watch movies now, and I see crowd scenes or parties, and I just go, I'm, I just don't even remember. You know, being able to be in a in a crowded foyer or just not thinking about things like touching things or not touching your face or being able to shake hands with somebody that you don't know, all of that stuff. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just so uncertain. And I think that's been the thing that, that we can all relate to. Um, and yeah, it has, it has brought us together, but it's really difficult as well because for the first time we all have time to be, seeing each other and I you know I would love nothing more than to get on a plane and go to Sydney or go to Adelaide to see dad and um mum's in Sydney and and um, we just can't do that so we're kind of we're pushed apart but with all this time to be able to spend together so yeah it has it has brought us together in a way we speak all the time um we do group chats and video calls and video zooms i mean god i wish i had shares in zoom before <laughs> before covid hit wow with your upbringing being in such a theatrical family do you remember when you fell in love with theater yeah so we moved to london um from sydney in 1990 uh, i was five and dad had uh, a resident director position at the Royal Opera in Covent Garden and so we moved over there and I vividly remember being taken to see several West End shows when I was super young. Um, I definitely saw Oliver, I definitely saw Grease, the production that I ended up playing Rizzo in 20 years later. Um, I remember seeing that at the Dominion Theatre in London and Dad and I went to see Starlight Express together about 12 times, I think. This is, yeah, this is. Wow. <laughs> I, can, is, I can certainly see you guys like mm, feeding each other there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little lesser known fact about my father and I is that both of us are obsessed with Starlight Express, which is fine. I've copped a, copped a bit of flack about it, but I won't take it because it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's an awesome musical. Well, I, I don't know the musical, so why, why, why do you love it so much? I think it was just, it was such a unique concept for a show. You know, there's, it, it's, yeah, centred around a young boy and his trains and the trains come to life and it was, yeah, it was like this rock musical that we'd had a train, had a track around the top and we would sit in this pit at the bottom and there was just racetracks everywhere and just, it's, I mean, it's camp, camp as. Um, and, yeah, I just grew up adoring the character of Pearl, who's the new, she's the new train on the block. 
who falls in love with Rusty, the older train on the block. And um, it's just gorgeous. So, yeah, Dad and I saw that so much. Um, and, you know, the West End have cheap tickets and just a, it's it makes theatre super accessible. So we'd just get the bus into town and we'd go and see something. And, yeah, so I, I remember being immersed in theatre from a very young age and also opera and um, classical music as well. So, yeah, I was I had a very rich upbringing in terms of seeing seeing live um, theatre and music and, and performance. Yeah. You've worked with your dad many times and he directed you in Victorian Opera's production of Into the Woods in which you starred as Cinderella. What are your memories of that production? Um, oh, it was... It was just the most wonderful show to be a part of. My my memories are that I was so upset that it was over so quickly um, and it definitely feels an unfinished in that I, I just, it was a role that I could easily do for a very long time and one that I don't feel that I've finished with. Um, yeah, I mean, it was only six performances or something um, and it sold out in a second and it was just like, no, we could have, I'm sure we could have gone for way longer, but it was just such a shame that it was it was so quick. But, yeah, I loved, I loved the cast. I loved Sondheim. I, it was just, it's very special to be able to perform that material here. And, yeah, especially Cinderella just has such a, warmth and such a heart about her she's a really a really beautiful character to portray so I loved it and I loved yeah I loved working for VO and yeah it was it was a joy what is it like when you work with your dad I, I wonder is there an incredible shorthand in those instances we've worked together a bit but not not a heap we've worked together on a little night music it's, it's, it's a beautiful production and I'm so glad Victorian Opera could do that again last year or bring it back to to melbourne but stunning it was it was equally as stunning if not more stunning when i saw it at vo last year i absolutely adored it what's that experience like stepping out of a production that you've appeared in you know with a sort of a gap to then sort of maybe come back and view it maybe with a bird's eye view in a different way yeah it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing because I did, I did that show first in 2009 and then we had a year off away from it and then when we came back, so we did it first in Melbourne and then we came back with a slightly different cast in 2010 and even having a year away from it was totally different again and then watching it, watching the same um, very similar production was was interesting again but I think with something like night music it's just those those characters are so stunningly drawn out and um yeah it was I thought it would be strange to watch it but it was it wasn't it was just perfect I loved it yeah and I loved Elisa I thought she was stunning You've appeared in so many musicals. You've already mentioned Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, as well as so many others. Mm. Are there any roles that you're really aching to perform in the future? I'd love to revisit Into the Woods. I'd love to revisit Into the Woods as the baker's wife. Um, and, yeah, there's not specific. Well, you know, I would love to be Pearl in Starlight Express, just saying... Um, if anybody was ever gonna, <laughs> if anyone was ever gonna bring Starlight Express to Australia, I'd, I'm just putting it out there. Love to, love to be seen for that. Just put that out into the universe. Just put it into the universe. Um, any Sondheim, I would just kill to do. Um, and yeah, I am personally hoping and praying that um, Fun Home gets up, which I have faith yes. that it will. Uh, because that is a seriously special piece of theatre. So I'm, yeah, I I was honoured and very excited to, to be doing that this year. And so, yeah, fingers crossed that that all goes ahead at some point. 
Reflecting on 2020, is there anything that you have uh, particularly renewed gratitude for? Yeah, every everything I have renewed gratitude for um, just the de- the daily the daily schedule of, of rehearsal and show and where I would have, you know, looked down the barrel of a five show weekend on a Friday night, I would kill to be doing a five show weekend at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I think just even being able to connect on a human level with people I have, I have gratitude for because I mean, after, however long we've been in stage four lockdown and before that I was in the suburb lockdown for seven weeks before that so it'll end up being you know close to three months that I've barely seen anyone so I just I just have gratitude for I would just for seeing people and talking to people and being in the same room as people um and being able to sing and make music and create and do all those things that we love and probably took for granted before what have you guys been doing as a family together whilst in lockdown? Uh, we've been giving Disney Plus a really good workout. Fantastic. <laughs> um, we've been doing a lot of exercise actually this time around. Last time was just – last time was kind of – lockdown one was uh, was sort of a novelty because it was a bit like, okay, well, we don't actually have anything – to do and the second this second one has been uh, harder on on our mental health I think just because yeah it was winter and it was it was super cold and gray and we weren't yeah so we decided to eat really well and do a lot of running and so yeah I've made a pretty big lifestyle change in terms of um you know committing committing to exercise uh but yeah i've been doing so much craft like just so tell much, us about your craft just so much craft. what sort of stuff <laughs> I, is it like an episode of play school at your house have you yeah. have you become benita collins yeah i are oh, benita um i yeah pipe cleaners everywhere just stuff glitter on the floor and yeah just glue and feathers and um, every now and again you'll see a feather out the side of the puppy's mouth, which is great too. Um, it's a madhouse. <laughs> well, at least, at least you know that the feather in the puppy's mouth has come from inside the house as opposed to some injured bird in the yard. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's been good. We've been doing heaps of cooking as well. I love to cook. So, yeah, first lockdown was all about baking, as I think it was with everybody. Everybody decided to, to bake bread and cakes and, and bloody any anything that they could think of. And this time we're just lots of soups, lots of, yeah, lots of Edie helping me in the kitchen. And Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, it is. It's been, it's been a lot of it has been very special. Lucy, as our final question... What's the first thing that you'd like to do after this time passes? Uh, as in, I can do anything. You can interpret this question however you like. Okay, I I would like to uh, get on a plane and do a three stop tour to Sydney to see my mum. And then on to Adelaide to see my dad and also to go to Laura from MasterChef's restaurant, which is in Adelaide, which is um, a pasta bar, which I must attend at some point. Uh, And then go to Hobart and see Jared's family. And um, apart from that, if I was just in Melbourne and the borders are still shut, then I would head to Il Salito Posto on George Parade in the city and get a giant bowl of pasta. Excellent move. Yeah, that's what I do. Lucy, thank you so, so much for joining us. It's been a joy to chat and please stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For more chats with artists in isolation, you can follow Victorian Opera across social media or visit victorianopera.com.au. I'm Scott Winfield. Thanks for watching.